Hello, Stephen Plays Audience, and welcome to the final Friday of 2018. Today, instead of doing a first 20, I'm going to be looking back at all the first 20s that we made this year and picking my top 10 favorite games. Now keep in mind, I'm choosing these games based off of first 20, aka I have only played like 30 minutes of each of these games, but that's still enough for me to make a list and decide which ones I enjoyed the most. We did this last year and people seemed to really enjoy it. Um, one difference about last year compared to this one is that I'm still super busy working on a lot of things, so we've kind of downscaled the production values on this video, which is why I'm shooting it vlog style. But the information is still the same, so hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Uh, same criteria applies last year. Um, we're looking at all the videos I made this year for First 20, but we will consider games up to three years old. That means 2016, 2017, and 2018. If any of the games were made uh, before then, they're not considered, unless they were remade or re-released. With all that being said, let's get started, shall we? So number 10 is Death Road to Canada, and this game is an absolute riot. It's basically Oregon Trail, except action-based, and you can play it co-op, which is how I recommend uh, you, you play the game. You can create yourself and your friends in the character generator, and then it'll actually ins insert them into the environment, so you can find them and save them, and, it, and they'll join your party. It's hilarious, it has a great sense of humor. You're gonna be doing um, a lot of <laughs> a lot of zombie killing, and uh, it feels very much like uh, River City Ransom, in a way. Um, just for the fact that uh, the humor is so good, and um, it's just a very upbeat, fun game to play, and it doesn't take all that long to put a session in, you're either going to win or lose, uh, I highly recommend it. Um, especially if you can sit down on the couch with someone and, and play it with a friend. It's a great game. Number nine is Yoku's Island Express, and it's really hard to explain what this game is, but the easiest way is to say that it's a pinball adventure game. It's, it's all the mechanics of a pinball game, but in a map that you travel around the world in. It's um, conceptually such a cool idea, um, and it's very fun to play. The controls can be a little fiddly, um, like it, you might have to hit you know, the ball in a very specific way in order to progress, but uh, it's still very fun, and um, I, I definitely highly recommend it. I had never really seen anything like it before. It reminds me in some ways of the uniqueness of Snake Pass last year, and uh, as soon as I had played it for the first time, I was like, okay, this, this is a great game. This is a great concept, and uh, Yoku's Island Express is, uh, is a lot of fun. Probably doubly so if you like pinball. Number eight is Jalopy. Now, I'll be the first to admit, Jalopy objectively is probably not a great game. Um, I don't think it's scored all that well, and uh, it has some problems. It definitely has some bugs. In fact, if I recall, I think the first 20 ended by the game freezing. So, like, there's some problems with Jalopy, but conceptually, I adore <laughs> Jalopy. It's a game where you, you basically have to build your own car and then you have to drive it. And getting from point A to point B in real time and having to actually be in the car in first person and like control every aspect of the car is bewildering. It's something that you take for granted in video games because all you really ever have to do is hold gas and that's it. So to be put in the driver's seat of the car and have to actually fiddle with everything and then like pull into a gas station and go in and buy supplies that you are going to need to take this long trip, it's it's the type of thing that's definitely not going to be for everybody. But um, for all of its flaws, Jalopy definitely had a special place in my heart this year. Uh, it's such a unique game, and I, I think if you could manage to get it on sale and you can sit through a few bugs and maybe a few crashes, it would be well worth your time. Number seven is Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. Um, this game, <laughs> this game should be mandatory playing for everyone. Uh, even if you only put a few minutes into it, and I know a lot of people that will do just that. It'll get a few minutes and that is it. Um, but it should be experienced. It's a really cool idea um, just to make a game that is so, so difficult and has this almost peaceful narration over it. Um, it's something that has stuck with me throughout the entire year, and uh, even now, like, 
I want, whenever, whenever people come visit, I want them to experience this game. You know, I want them to sit down and play it for just a little bit. And uh, for a while you get really into it. It's kind of hard to explain, but after you've played it for just a little bit, you're, something clicks in your brain and you really want to beat it. And you feel like you can until you realize that it's it's going to take you hours and hours. The coolest thing is I've actually looked up on YouTube, people have beaten this thing in like two minutes. You know, a game that would take a normal person like four or five hours. People have now got it down to a science where they can beat it in, in two minutes, and that's unreal. But uh, if you've never played Getting Over It, you owe it to yourself to uh, to try it out. Just be aware before you, you know, drop some cash on it that uh, there is a very real possibility that you may only play it for a few minutes tops. <laughs> Number six is Descenders. And I'm gonna be honest, um, there was a part of me that wanted to put this as number one on the list. I really, really like Descenders. Um, they've uh, continued to work on the game and add things to it, uh, but whenever we played it, it was already like one of my favorite games of the year. Um, it's procedurally generated BMX, and uh, you're, you're looking at an overworld screen, and you get to pick different paths that you want to choose for your levels, and it's all procedurally generated, and there's different traits for that track. So you might pick something that's like really downhill, there's levels that are like going through the woods, and it's like super hard to do and super dangerous, and uh, it just really gets your blood pumping. It's a really great idea. Uh, the first time I played it, I, I absolutely loved it. And um, the fact that they're still working on it and still adding things to it, you know, brings me a lot of joy. At some point, I would love to uh, play more of it, maybe on a stream or something like that, um, just because I, I love the idea. If you're into ex extreme sports, um, you know, particularly like Tony Hawk or Dave Mir, etc., I think you would really like Descenders. Um, it is definitely, definitely worth trying. Number five on the list is Celeste, and uh, this was one of the final games, or the final game, I guess, we played for First 20 this year, and uh, man, it's good. It's really good. We've played a lot of indie games this year. Um, Celeste ranks as one of the best ones by far. Um, I just, I really enjoyed, the, the music was really good, the tone of the game was really good, um, the, uh, the graphical contrast between the, you know, the overworld menus where you're picking your stage being like 3D and then the, the pixelated art style. Uh, and then it, on occasions you'd get, um, you know, these images that are uh, hand-drawn. It's just, it's a really, really cool experience. Um, and it's, it's also, uh, like, actually challenging, but also very forgiving. So if you die, it's not like you have limited lives or anything. It just keeps track of this information, so at the end you can see how you did. I like that a lot. Um, there's all these additional things in the form of strawberries that you can go after if you want, but you don't have to. Um, Celeste was just really great. Um, it had won a lot of awards by the time I played it, and having played it, I can see why it did. Uh, it was just stupendous and absolutely worth your time. Number four is Prey, and uh, this was a game that was originally released in 2006 and then uh, was remade uh, like 10 years later. Prey is really fantastic. It's hard to explain um, all of the different emotions that it made me feel, but unnerving is the best one that I could, I could say. Prey operates a little bit um, like Bioshock, but there's also this really complex crafting system. But the thing that, that stuck with me throughout the entire year after playing Prey are mimics. Uh, throughout the game, you're going to find ordinary objects that just feel out of place. Something is wrong. Like you walk into an office area and there might be a trash can or something and like, yeah, an office should have a trash can. And you turn around and you notice there's a second trash can and you know that one of those trash cans is like an alien and it's going to come to life and it's gonna attack you. And that was like single-handedly one of the coolest things I've seen in video games. Like Mimics as a, a game concept is nothing new, but the way that Prey approached it was so cool and uh, again, unnerving uh, as all get out to walk into a room and not be sure what's real and what's not. Um, that combined with a really cool crafting system and uh, like all these interesting RPG elements, uh, it, was, it was a game that I hope to return to at some point. If you're a fan of Bioshock in particular, I think you'd really enjoy it. Um, it's obviously 
<laughs> it obviously has some horror elements, but uh, it was really cool, and uh, I would highly recommend it. Number three on the list is Subnautica. Uh, Subnautica is a survival game. Uh, you crash land on a uh, another world, an alien world, and it's all, at least from the part that I played, uh, completely underwater. So you have this this lifeboat that is keeping you alive, but you have to go out and you have to do research on things and you have to collect supplies. And it's this big crafting survival game, and it's just legitimately fun. Uh, I think one of the things that I enjoy so much about it is that everything is alien. Everything is foreign. It's not a survival game where things are going to be rooted in what you know. There's going to be some things that are familiar, and then also you're filling in the blanks because your brain is trying to identify stuff from what you know, from your, you know, brain archives. You'll see, you'll see a fish that, you know, it's not any fish that you've seen on Earth, but you're trying to draw conclusions about what it is and what it could do and, and what its its purpose could be. Also, the game's gorgeous. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. So, um, Subnautica, it's, it's a wonderful game. And honestly, I only played a little bit of it um, for first 20. Mallory fell in love with the game and actually put hours and hours and hours into it, um, you know, off screen. So she really loved it and she talks about it quite a bit. So uh, for that reason, Subnautica made third place on our list. In our second place spot, I'm putting Enter the Gungeon. Uh, this is a very fun, very well-crafted uh, twin stick shooter. Um, it's primarily designed for single player, but it can be enjoyed multiplayer. Uh, the downside is uh, of all of the different types of character you can use in single player, and in multiplayer, the second player can only be one type. Um, but what I, what I played with Mao was incredibly fun. And to be honest, there was a lot of games that could have taken this second place spot. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of them in a second. Um, but Enter the Gungeon, I think, stood out to me personally as the most fun game to me um, of the set. Uh, it was just a really enjoyable, you know, bullet hell game. Um, you know, great animation, really fun music, and uh, overall just a really fun time. So before I reveal the number one spot, I'm going to go over some honorable mentions. These are games that Honestly, they could have very easily deserved a place on the list. These numbers don't really matter. I mean, all of these games are fantastic. And in fact, I played so many good games uh, this year, it was hard to pick what the top 10 would even be. Uh, but here are some other games that uh, I thought were fantastic and you should definitely play if you get a chance. Uh, first up is Super Flight. This game is very basic. Uh, there's no music. It was uh, created by uh, three guys in college. It is basically a game where you just fly around and you get points for doing so. Um, very easy to learn, very hard to master, uh, procedurally generated. It's like three bucks and I highly recommend it. It's the type of game that, you know, when folks come over, you've got your computer, your Steam Link hooked up to your TV, everyone can give it a shot and see what their high score is. I just really enjoy it and it's a game that I've come back to even after the first 20 ended. So Super Flight is really great. Uh, Bayonetta. Bayonetta obviously came out years ago, but it was re-released this year on Nintendo Switch, and I get a chance to play it. Um, that game is ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it, that's the best way I could put it. It is ridiculous. It's so over the top that it's enjoyable just to see what on earth they are going to do or say next. Like, the gameplay is fun, too, and, and I think that's worth, you know, mentioning, is that it's, it's a legit fun game, but doggone it, it's just... <laughs> The game was ridiculous. Just playing the first, the, the first like 30 or 40 minutes, um, it was wild and uh, highly recommended. Uh, another honorable mention goes to Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass. This is a uh, RPG maker game that was uh, created by one person. It's a very long game. It took them a very long time to make, and it's in the style of Earthbound. Um, I really enjoyed the humor. I really enjoyed the, the sprite work and uh, just all of the love and attention that went into it. Um, if you are into RPGs, if you're into, you know, games very reminiscent of the Earthbound series, I'd highly recommend it. I think it'd be worth your time. Another honorable mention is Hidden Folks. And this, 
it still qualifies as a game, in my opinion. It's probably best played on mobile. In fact, um, after we did the first 20, uh, I enjoyed it so much, and I thought my dad would enjoy it so much, that I actually got him a copy of the game for his phone. It's basically... Where's Waldo? And for some people, that's not going to qualify as much of a game, and if, if that's you, then that's fine. It's legitimately fun. It's a great uh, mobile game time waster, and it's very, very well produced. Um, all of the sounds in the game are produced by human mouths, and um, it's such a weird little detail that's so cool, and uh, I love the art style, and I love everything about it. Uh, me and Mal played it um, earlier in the year, and uh, it's, it's still one that has stuck with me, so Hidden Folks is uh, definitely one to check out, especially on mobile. Another honorable mention goes to We Happy Few. This is a game that was in development for ages, um, just years and years and years, and people were wondering when we were going to get to see it. And I think ultimately when it came out, it probably didn't live up fully to the hype, um, but conceptually the game is really great. The story of the game is really great. And uh, the first 20 that I did went on for a long time because I was just so engrossed in it. If you haven't seen anything about the game, I'd recommend watching the first 20 I did on that and then deciding from there if you'd like to continue. Um, I guess you could say that for <laughs> all of these games to some extent. But uh, We Happy Few was, was really interesting, um, and I really enjoyed at least what I played of the game. Also going to give an honorable mention to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. This was the first 20 that I did with Emil, and um, I, had, I had a feeling that I was going to like the game, but I liked it even more than I thought. It's uh, like an XCOM-style strategy game, but with Mario characters, and um, I just really, really loved what I played. It's got so much character, and uh, if you maybe thought about skipping out on it because of the Rabbids, um, try to look past that. Try to give it a shot, because it actually was a ton of fun. And uh, there's also a Donkey Kong DLC that I didn't get a chance to play personally, but I have a feeling I would really enjoy, and uh, just everything about it was fun. It's also nice to see Mario with a gun. <laughs> I think there should be more games where Mario has a gun. So we have one more section before I reveal the number one first 20 this year, and uh, I'm going to start by saying this isn't fair to these games. To lump them all into this big group, it's not fair, because all of these games are seriously stupendous. But the fact of the matter is, I played a lot of games this year, and I enjoyed a ton of them, and if I talked about every single game, I would probably list every first 20 that I played this year. So these are games that are all fantastic, but in some way, shape, or form, play similar to others, you know, in this section. And finally, the number one game of 2018, taking into consideration that I've only played these games for like 30 or 40 minutes at most, is Cuphead. And some of you probably saw this coming, um, but Cuphead is, <sighs> Cuphead's a masterpiece. I mean, just conceptually, the game is astounding. The art style is astounding. The music is fantastic. What they went for is like, it's such a, a high mark to even try to achieve, and they hit it. Um, the game is hard as nails. The game is not accessible to people, and that's gonna turn people off, and I understand that. Um, I don't think that I could probably even get through the entire game myself, but of what I played, it was such an, an incredible experience, and since then, they've actually added DLC as well. Um, Cuphead was a game that Mal and I both talked about, and it's like, man, this is such an amazing game. And there's so much content in that game, and it just took such a long time. This was another game, uh, similar to We Happy Few, but probably much more successful, where we had heard about it for years and years and years, and it was like, well, when's it going to come out? And when it finally came out, it achieved what it set out to do, and it won a bunch of awards, and it deserved them. I mean, Cuphead, Cuphead is fantastic. It really is. At some point, I would like to play more Cuphead. Um, I don't know when I'll get a chance to, um, 
especially considering that it is, you know, as hard as it is, but uh, I just really love it. Um, I think it's a beautiful game, a beautiful sounding game, and they hit the era that they were trying to, to hit. It just a great game, and in my opinion, well-deserving of the number one spot on this list. And that's my top ten. And again, I could have talked about so many more games. I really could have. Um, I probably could have talked about basically every single game I played this year. I think it was a great year for First 20. Um, but I had to cut it somewhere, and I made the difficult decisions that I did. And maybe you'll agree with some of the decisions I made, maybe you won't, but you will have to keep in mind the fact that I've only played 20 to 30 minutes of each of these games. And uh, that's obviously, for some of you, not going to be enough to say, well, you can't judge a, a, an entire game on that. Sure. But uh, these are the calls that I can make having played what I played. And, um, you know, certainly some of these left, you know, a serious impression on me. And uh, I think that's pretty telling. But what I'm interested uh, to know is, what was your favorite game of 2018? Maybe I didn't cover it. And God knows there were amazing games released this year. I'm, I'm covering, you know, Red Dead and Smash right now. But there were other amazing releases like God of War and Spider-Man, etc. Um, the Assassin's Creed game, Origins? So there's all these games that came out this year that, that people have really, you know, adored. Um, I feel really happy about the games that I, I get a chance to show off on First 20, um, but I'm really curious to hear what your favorites were for this year. And uh, hopefully next year we'll be able to do this again and maybe produce it just a little bit more. Um, you know, maybe I'll be able to uh, come up with, uh, you know, more formulated thoughts <laughs> instead of just quickly rambling about uh, how I felt about the games. But uh, with any luck, you still enjoyed this video. And uh, I hope you'll join me in looking forward to 2019. 2018 was an amazing year for video games. I mean, like, geez. We're going to remember this year for a long time. But uh, it just makes me excited to see what's on the horizon for 2019. And I don't know what it's going to be, but First 20 will be around to uh, try out lots of games. And hopefully influence your purchasing decisions and help you guys make educated decisions. Anyway, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys next Friday for more First 20.